And welcome to In-Game Chat for Saturday, June 12th, 2021, into Season 15, Episode 19. I'm Scott. And I'm RJ. And uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, don't think that uh, don't think it's on your end that things are looking bad. It is completely on ours. The internet here is still just all kind of horrible. Um and I don't exactly know when it's going to get, it's in the process of getting fixed, but it is, um, yeah, it's still bad. Have you ever found out what the cause of it was? Uh, no, no, mm. no, I don't, I don't, you know, at home I'll dip my toe into that stuff all the time, but at work, right. <laughs> we got other people to do that while I'm doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll let them figure it out. I mean, I would love to get on top of it and, and fix it, but there's already somebody who is much more advanced than me as far as trying to do that. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a fix. It's not that anything is broken. Um, for whatever reason, we just—I uh, don't know—I don't know what the situation was. But we used to have—I mean, we used to have fiber connection here. At yeah. least I thought, or at least hundred up, hundred down type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, or even fifty up, a hundred down. Even that would be fine. But uh, no, we had we had really, really—I mean, fat. You know, you remember? I yeah. used to. Yeah. You, when get, I had you the, get stuff in a minute, right? When I had the when I had the ability, or when I had the when I had the time after a show, yeah, um, I would actually edit the video here because the upload process, the amount of time it took to upload the video to YouTube, was twenty minutes in comparison to me at home, and it was like two and a half, four hours, something like that. I don't know. It was it was hours and hours and hours. But here, twenty minutes. And the entire thing is uploaded onto YouTube. Uh, so I used to, I used to actually, if I had time, I would actually stay and, and, and edit this thing. I don't do it now because I don't bring my computer here with me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all between a flash drive and the internet at home is, is actually faster. Now it takes, I think, uh, I think about 90 minutes or so, an hour and 45. It takes less than two hours to upload the entire show uh, to YouTube now. That's, that's gotten a lot faster. Uh, with Maynard at home, it'd be faster here if uh, if we had uh, the internet like it used to be. But I don't know. I don't know at what point this. It, it has been it has been like this for weeks now. If our upload is you know around ten, we're we're fine. Even even around five. Right now it's at one or less, mm-hmm. which is why this thing is dropping frames like crazy and making it look uh, look nasty. No, there is no, there's no mining farm. There's no, there's nothing that is eating the internet. There's nothing that is using up, uh, you know, bandwidth or anything like that. It is simply the provider put us down at some sort of level. And I, you know, I don't exactly know why we haven't changed that. Aren't decisions for me to make. I would say that maybe it's a subscription service that we need to be bumped back up. I don't actually know that that's the case. I don't really know what it is, to be honest with you. I don't, um, the guy who does could sit here and explain it to me all day as to what's going on, and uh, I would really, uh, I would, I would not know. Um, yeah, the uh, okay, the upgrade on the fiber. <laughs> I don't know why it's an upgrade. First off, if you if you if you're on fiber and you're getting this kind of thing, there's no point in being on fiber. You get fiber for the speed. Um, so I'm not sure. It says the upgrade on the 5050 to the to 5050 on the fiber was approved. Hopefully, it'll be for Vision soon, uh, whatever that means. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know when we're going to get fast internet here. But uh, if you're watching the stream, uh, that is not a you problem. It is completely an us problem on this. Uh, yeah, the audio is going fine. The audio should be fine. The video is really nasty. 
Um, in fact, I don't even know if our Discord is going to – I mean, our Discord is up, by the way, if you want to do that. But I'm looking at our our connection with the voice and everything else, and it's having trouble trying to keep the uh, the voice connection. So even if you're in the uh, the Discord chat room with us, you would likely hear static or whatever, you know, stuttery. The audio would cut in and out, I mm-hmm. imagine. Because um, that's how bad it is. You can't even run an audio Discord server <laughs> – uh, while also streaming cannot be done here. Mm-hmm. Cannot be done. It has been annoying. Um, it really has. It's not, you know, I was like, well, why don't, why don't you get that fixed? Because it's not actually hindering me in any other way than this. And the show didn't bring in money. So it's like, eh, I could complain about it and ask them to fix it. They are working on it, by the way. Yeah. You know, there was actually, I had to, there was something I had to download this week that was, oh, about a hundred some odd gigs. I just did that at home. Mm-hmm. You know, I tried to do it here, but in, I don't know, five hours, it had only downloaded seven gigs, I think. Oh. Um, I started at 11, and then I mm-hmm. think at like 3.30 or three, almost 3 o'clock, I looked at it and I was like, you're only at seven gigs. And I, I even split up the download to do it in 50 gig increments. And, ah. So I just canceled that, did it at home. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and so that was a situation where I was like, man, I mean, that's really bad. Please, please get this fixed. And they've been working on it, but I don't know. So whatever, uh, if you'd like to get in touch with us, our phone number, and currently we're completely, our phone lines are busied out. There we go. Now you can call them. If you want to do that, you can call us. Our phone number is the phone lines, by the way, should go fine. <laughs> They're not based on the internet. But uh, 334-272-9228 is the number you can call us at. Check out ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at ingamechat. You can also find us on Facebook there as well. Tweeted this morning, or I say this morning, uh, not too long ago, actually. Um, uh, Tweeted about, uh, we were watching the uh, Ubisoft press conference, and so we're going to be talking about that. And then Devolver came on. Of course, we'll talk about that. Um, you know, we've got our Discord there. I was I invited people to join us in our Discord because if you join our Discord, then we have a room there where you can pop in and talk to us. Just like you called in, but you didn't actually have to call in. You can still just talk to us through Discord. You can use that if you'd like to do that as well. Talk to us about what you've seen. Uh, I, but again, I don't know how the audio is going to sound. First, you listening to us through that, and then you talking to us. I don't know how that's going to come across either. Uh, what with the internet being the way it is, so... It's um, it sucks when you don't have internet. <laughs> mm-hmm. it technically, I mean, I say technically, we do have it, but basically, we really don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we really, we really don't. Uh, you can uh, join us on Discord if you like to. We're streaming right now on Twitch. I mentioned this, so maybe you can watch. You want to listen to the audio through that? You can Twitch TV. Go there, type in in game chat, or go to our website, which is up and working now because of all that stuff we had to deal with in the past two weeks prior. Uh, but got that all straightened out. Thank you to DreamHost for doing that. Um, yeah, you can listen live as well. Uh, I guess those are going okay. You know, I, I check our streams just to make sure that we are streaming, but most of the time I listen, uh, you know, and through the radio on the drive, you know, back and forth, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And I check to make sure our stations are on. I use the stream as well. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so you can do that also. <clears throat> uh, thanks for joining us. It is E3 week, and we had uh, Summer Games Fest earlier this year, or earlier this year, earlier this week. Mm. We had Ubisoft today, Devolver today. I want to say that uh, Gearbox is going on right now. So uh, I think Gearbox is doing theirs, which is showing off probably some Borderlands 3 stuff, some of the Wonderland stuff that they announced. Which I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Did you did you see any of that from the Summer Games Fest? The, no. the new okay. No, it's a yeah. It's a new Gearbox title called Wonderlands, mm-hmm. but it looks like Borderlands. They took the art style of Borderlands. They put it into Wonderlands. They even added Tiny Tina as a part of it. Which you know, if they're trying to make it as a separate thing, then they're that's failing. not the way to do that. But. It it is it's it is a standalone thing. It is not a separate thing from Borderlands, from what I understand. It's going to have references to Borderlands, but it's something that you can play without even if you've never played a Borderlands game, yeah. you're good to go on this. If you have, you're going to enjoy it because it's just kind of more the same. Okay, I was thinking more something more along the lines of a uh, like Borderlands a pre sequel, not like 
right. way before everything. Right. It's a part of the story, but well before anything that you're currently familiar with. Yeah, so and I don't like actually that. know what the story the story part of it is. You know mm-hmm. how it how they how they put it into that universe of Borderlands, or how they connect it to Borderlands in that way. Other than yeah. the the character, um, you know, the Tiny Tina connection yeah. between there. Um, and there could be more connections, and likely there are, mm-hmm. uh, because they did say that you'll catch some of the references if you are a Borderlands fan, but you don't need to catch those if you're not, you know, to, in order to enjoy the game. So uh, there was that, and, and we're going to get into that as well. Uh, but as we go along, I will say the games that we played this week, I've, I've played Destiny. Well, no, I actually didn't. I played Destiny Saturday night, did the raid. Sunday I played Destiny, and then I didn't touch it until this morning. Mm-hmm. Um and it's even Iron Banner week, which normally I like to get in a little, some, a few matches here and there in between, so I don't have to grind so hard to get that done before reset on Tuesday, mm-hmm. um, since it's only like a once a month thing that they do. Uh, but mm, I'm okay either way, regardless on that. I mean, there'll be another Iron Banner before, there'll be two more Iron Banners before I think this season is over with, uh, which will be fine. I only do it to get my main level closer to the pinnacle power cap, which is 320 this this season. And right now I'm sitting at 317, close to 318. So I'll do it mm-hmm. in time. It's going to yeah. be, I'll, I'll get there. It's fine. Slowly but surely. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make it. If I'm doing, if I'm running the raid each week and I'm doing what I'm doing, then I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I don't have to go through the suffering of Iron Banner. I can get there quicker if I do Iron Banner, but yeah. I don't have to necessarily suffer through it. So right now at 317, every little bit helps. Uh, 30... Is it 3117? I don't know what, where we're at. We're in the 3000s now. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's 3017 or 31. I think we're in the, I think we just passed the 3000. So I think it'd be 3017, 3020. Yeah, okay. I think. God. Basically, the closer you get to the limit, the longer the grind gets. Anyway, right, right. So. Well, the closer you get to that cap, the harder, I don't want to say the harder it can be, but the, the more it is just. It seems to get more tedious. Well, it's purely based on luck, you know? Mm. You may have. Uh, the the way it tries to distribute is, hey, we see that you have this many slots of a 3018 item, you know, all this stuff on your armor, whatever, so here's a 3019 weapon. Okay, that's great. That's going to continue to progress. You don't matter what drops because it's all going to help you move mm-hmm. until you have a 320 on your helmet, your arms, your uh, your class item, your feet, you know, and you've got 320 in your kinetic and your energy, and then you got a 319 sitting there in your heavy. Mm-hmm. So now everything you do that drops a pinnacle, you're like, well, I hope it's going to be the heavy weapon I need. Mm-hmm. Instead, it drops another kinetic or another helmet or another yep. arms. You're going through all this stuff, and you just give me a heavy weapon. That's all I need. And then, boom, once you hit that level cap, everything drops at 320, yep. you know? Um, or at least everything new will be dropping at 320, and you'll be mm-hmm. you'll be good to go. Uh, Too bad there's no trade options in uh in this game. I know, I know. Well, that's why this is why a lot of people run things like Iron Banner and everything else is because yeah. it's more opportunities for it to drop what they need. Mm-hmm. Currently, I'm not sitting in that at that position right now, mm-hmm. and uh, and I'm fine. And last season, it didn't take much. I, I think I got really, really lucky, and you know. Had something drop the way it needed to, to to drop for me, and boom, I was good to go. Mm-hmm. Really early in the, or, eh, I don't want to say early in the season, but decent way into it, where I didn't have to worry about that sort of thing anymore. The last season, though, the power level was uh, the gap was a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Now it's ten. Last year, last season, maybe it was I don't know what it was twenty or so. I can't remember what it was, but it was longer. And this time it's not so much. So I'll get I should get there quicker. Uh, if I if I if I pushed, I would I would get there quicker. But I don't I don't know that I feel the need to push. You know, last year taught me that I didn't have to. You know, last year also taught me that those times I did push, maybe I didn't have to. Yeah. You know, if I could have, uh, and I can I can easily see the seasonal challenges from this year as the seasonal they they reveal themselves week by week, and a lot of people just burn through because mm-hmm. there'll be challenges of like get so many kills doing this, get so many kills kills doing this. Uh, do all of this stuff. And what I discovered, or at least what I feel like the case is, and I know that it is this way, is that if you just kind of let those weeks do what they're going to do, don't rush them. You're going to be in a better position later on to knock off two or three different things 
instead of one at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, the more that opens up, the more you're going to have things that kind of overlap with yep. what you have to do. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so basically you just wait. Mm-hmm. You know, just wait it out if you can or just play. Actually, basically, that's my thing. You don't even have to wait. Just play. Mm-hmm. Just play. It'll all come, you know, naturally. Uh, I know things give XP and things give a lot of different things once you mark off one of these little challenges and everything else. And I understand the drive or the need to kind of, you know, do that or that driver need to feel like, well, now I've got all this stuff I've got to do. I don't want that to pile up. So I have a ton of stuff. But because of the overlap, it doesn't really feel like it's piling up, mm-hmm. you know. I've got I've got one now that says to uh, decrypt a bunch of those engrams. Um, I think one one from I think two weeks ago said to decrypt fifteen, and then one for this week I think decrypt thirty. Well, I could have gone through and blown through those fifteen. Now I don't necessarily know that they would have retroactively counted towards this next one, Mm -hmm. but I'll be doing both now, Yeah, you know, as I, as I do that and I'll fill them up as, as I go. I don't know that they're going to count retroactively. I have no idea, but uh, some things do, some things don't. Some things are defeat. um, We'll give you an example. I don't even know if this is out there, but just a way that you can stack these things in gambit Challenging enemies, they're the orange bar, health bar enemies. Yeah. You know, they're one up from the from the red bar grunt type people. They're, you know, a little bit more challenging. And it's like get challenge, kill challenging enemies in Gambit. And then there's another one that says get, uh, you know, 50 kills with an auto rifle or something like that while mm-hmm. playing Gambit. Well, I can knock both of those out while I'm, you know. Instead, had I tried to do it week by week, I'd be putting in, you know, more time because I did that once and then I got to do it again Mm. Uh, because that's something that while it does overlap, it's not retroactive. So in other words, if you had already killed 50 challenging enemies in Gambit, that doesn't count towards it until that week became active. Yeah. And so this is why there's sort of a, you know, don't go hard, wait it out Mm -hmm. because eventually you'll get to the end of this thing. I don't know how many weeks it's going to say that there is, there used to be like 10 or something like that. But eventually it'll get to this point where everything will be open and you'll run a nightfall or you'll play uh, three matches of Gambit and you'll clear out like five different things Mm -hmm. because you've been using certain weapon types you need to get kills with or you're killing certain enemy types that you need to get kills with or you're uh, progressing, you know, God knows what else. I have no idea, but you can knock out a bunch of those. So, yeah, it's... um, I've learned the... I think... I will say this. I think I think I've learned this not only with the health issues that I had last year, but also with the the destiny stuff and and I don't know, maybe anything else is just um uh take your time with it, you know? Mm-hmm. On a lot of things, just take your time. No rush. Mm-hmm. You know? Don't 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 uh don't don't rush at it. Don't go hard at it. You're gonna you're gonna save yourself a lot of work in the long run if you just sort of, you know. Pace. Yeah, because you, yeah, you said you discovered uh, later on after those that um, you were playing a lot more efficiently than yeah. you used to. Yeah. You know, it's not grinding as much because you're just playing. Uh, you're getting the most uh, bang for your buck, uh, so to speak. Yeah. With the, yeah. in terms of XP and gaining. I can remember. Not very long ago. Last year. Maybe last year, probably last year, year. Well, last year, and then just start with last. Well, last year was twenty twenty. Start with early last year, and then go back the year before that, the year before that, the year before that. Um, for the most part, I'd come home Saturday after the show. I'd do the editing on the video. I'd get that stuff done. I'd wait to upload because obviously it eats bandwidth and stuff. Mm-hmm. But once I was done, um. I would wait for the processing of the video to go through because I was worried about my graphics card and my processor. Once that was done, though, boom, back into Destiny, just playing it throughout the night. And then when I was done, I'd start the upload. Next morning, I'd get up, I'd do the show post, make sure that's all good. And then at some point around, I don't know, 8 or 9 in the morning, whatever time it was I was doing this, uh, then it was Destiny. And it was Destiny until like 3 or 4 in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. You know, just going going to town mm-hmm. until 3 or 4 in the afternoon. Um 
And then even if I didn't do that, I would, you know, likely stop playing at like two. I'd never, I, I would always go past noon and then stop playing at like two, either go play something else on the console or go watch something on TV until I fell asleep or something like that. And, and that just, that's, that's not how things work anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm actually okay with that. Mm -hmm. I like, I I say, I like it. (laughs) I've, I've devoted now, uh, I've devoted myself now to, you know, Sundays is when I can kind of get out there and take care of the yard or something. Mm -hmm. I hate that. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't necessarily want to go back to where I'm sitting in front of Destiny all day. Yeah. But I also don't want to go out and do yard work in the, in this weather. Have, have you gotten to the point where you're going to burn the lawn? Oh, that's that's every day. That's every day. <laughs> I pull into the driveway every day. I was like, oh, I need to set this whole place on fire. Um, yeah. Smooth black carpet. I yeah. mean, yeah. Or, 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 or uh, let's just cement the whole thing. You know? <laughs> just, just put down gravel, cement. I don't care. Just cover it. So I never have to make it. And I don't mind. It's not that I don't mind looking at it. Look, the lawn is fine. I just see it grow. And I'm like, I just cut you a week ago or two weeks ago or whatever it is. A week. Four days. It goes fast. Four days. Yeah, man. It grows fast. Yeah. So fast. And what what really gets me, and I know there's not gaming that we're we're talking about here. What really gets me are those thorny vines. Mm -hmm. These thorny vines are the fastest growing things I've ever seen. I will cut them one week, and by the next week, you'll see it coming out of the ground. And and you probably won't pay attention to it, but by the next week, it'll be this thick thing that has actually grown three or four times what it was mm. just a week ago. Like, man. So it's you, a weed. You cut it. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's yeah. this vine stuff. I mean, the yard's just, I don't want to say it's covered in them, but it used to be. Um but yeah, and so, yeah, I do hate doing that. But yeah. at the same time, it's like well, I'll just yeah, say you've adjusted. You've adjusted since have, everything that happened. I That's have, all. I yeah. have, and of course, it helps with uh, it helps with the it helps with weight loss with what I do. It helps with mm-hmm. the weight loss. It helps with getting the exercise. Mm-hmm. You know that sort of thing, um, and you know, makes the yard look better. So. Yeah. Uh, that's just an temporarily, aside. you know. That was just that was just something I was thinking about. Where it's like, here's what I used to do on my weekends. Here's what I don't do anymore. Um, and I'm not saying that to say that I miss doing it because, like I said, I don't. And there are some days where, sure, I'll just spend the entire day inside doing whatever. You know, it's fine because uh, because sometimes it's just too hot to go outside. <laughs> it's miserably hot. And it's going to get hotter. Yeah, it is. I forgot so, yeah. to do this, by the way. So here we are at halfway through the show. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's take this phone call real quick before we go. I imagine it is Chris. I don't actually would, don't know who it is. Uh, hello, you're on in-game chat. Who's this? Hey, your guest was right. It's me, Chris. <laughs> What's going on, man? Oh, uh, not much. Enjoying getting out and enjoying the air conditioning but, uh, at the moment. But, yeah, you're right. You know, the hot and humidity and everything, yeah. We got out early and went to a, a yard sale and a flea market sale and a state sale, I think it was. And I found a whole basket full of different connectors and adapters and things in this nature and found a, uh, one of those little selfie sticks that has the, the little, uh, 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 little five thing, you know, c- c- connect to your phone, you know, a uh, Bluetooth adapter where you can zoom right, in and yeah. out and take a picture and everything. I got the whole basket and the whole tons of connect there's a headset and everything uh you know the, 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 the like the large to small adapters for you know for the phono jack all kind of good stuff for like seven bucks including the basket and everything so i found a bunch of cool stuff there went by the, the bamboo forest in prattville and saw a turtle and a bunch of toady frogs and toady frogs another, yeah toady frogs toady frogs <laughs> i've never heard them <laughs> yeah. called toady frogs or yeah toads you know black you know i think they were black toads you know but uh we actually saw one that was sitting up on one of the, the dead bamboo uh, trees that was laying in the pond. You know, he was just sitting there facing off to the left. You know, I was kind of surprised he didn't. He was sitting there. But, uh, yeah, we met another couple out there that was from the U.K. and everything and talked to them for a while and a little bit of this and that and got a little playing done this afternoon. And then one of the random thunderstorms came by and said, I unplugged everything and this. Uh-oh. no. We lost you, man. Yeah, after. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, we yeah, got we you got now. You. Yeah, just it just cut out there for a second. 
But, yeah, we're having some fun and heading back to the house with some Jim's barbecue from the place up here where we uh, get barbecue every now and then. So, uh, yeah, we're, we've been having some fun. Well, well, good. good. It's good to hear from you and glad you're enjoying yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least y'all can be thankful you're inside and nice and cool right now at the moment. But uh, Yeah, it's a little yeah. cool. It's, it's a little bit um, not as cold as it usually is in here. No, no, it's not. I'm going to fix that here in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have, we're going to have ice coming out of the AC again. I mean, well, it's completely turned off. That would be why. Mm-hmm. And we can't have that because that'll be, that'll be horrible. Mm. And have it cold enough for it to, if you got a runny nose, it'll be frozen when it's dripping out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There won't be a drip. Well, Chris, we appreciate you calling in, man, and uh, have a safe trip home and, and have a good week, and we'll talk to you next week, okay? And the other thing I've been playing, I've, oh. I finally started playing the uh, Mass Effect trilogy and been getting into that again and playing the first one. So yeah, I think you mentioned uh, that yeah, last week, enjoy- or you start maybe you hadn't started it yet last week. Uh, that maybe that was. But yeah, I, I did install it and I did start playing it. I haven't got very far, but uh, yeah, I've been enjoying it. So y'all have a good one. All right, man. Take care. See you. All right. Bye. 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 Always good to hear from Chris. If you want to get in on the show, you can three three four. Two seven two nine two two eight. Duke Frukum has joined the chat room and says, "Oof, the video. Yeah, I know it's bad. That is not your internet. That is our internet. It is bad. Our internet is bad. Uh, I don't know why I have to say bad that way, but I do. If you want to listen to us, there you can. You can listen to us on the stream. You can just listen to the audio portion. You can probably well. Duke's in the chat room right now, and you can probably listen to that. I don't know how the audio is. Um." Duke, if you do you have your mic on in the chat room there? He does. Okay. I'm gonna pop this up. I'm gonna put you on the air real quick. I'm curious what your audio sounds like. Um uh, Duke, you there? Hello, Duke. There's something trying to come through. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It could be it's probably very likely our internet situation here. Yeah, that is bad, which mm-hmm. really sucks. I'll try and get him on uh in you know, after we get back from our break. We gotta take a break here real quick. We'll come back with more of in game chat. We're gonna talk about what RJ played and dive into all this E three stuff that we've had for the entire week. Um there's so much to talk about, or at least so much to kind of recap. Uh, we may get through it in this episode, but then of course we're going to have even more to talk about next week because there's still, I think Gearbox is going on right now. They're probably over with, uh, but you've also got Microsoft and Bethesda tomorrow. Uh, I think maybe a couple of other things tomorrow as well. And then Monday there's something. And then Tuesday is Nintendo and there's still a lot to go on with, uh, with E3. So yeah, yeah, it's really bad, man. I'm sorry. The internet is just horrible. So here is music from Ninja Gaiden, the NES days, because I think the remaster's now out on PC or something. Mm-hmm. There's a rem- there's a remastered of a uh, some some bulk uh, collection. Yeah, a big collection of it yeah. as well. Uh, it's not doing too great on PC, from what I understand. Bugs, bugs are plenty. Anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, this is going back to the old NES days. So you know what you're going to hear, and we'll be right back with more in game chat right after this. Back to in-game chat. Music here from Stonefly. Can't remember what that game's about, but it's called Stonefly. I don't remember how I found it either. Anyway. Seen Life of Fly, but not Stonefly. Yeah. Thar66 says, too many special events. E3 Gearbox show sucked, by the way. Um... 
didn't get to watch it. Uh, it started right when we started, so I didn't I didn't get a chance to look at it. But I don't think they had anything. That, well, uh, they may have announced some new details about games that were already announced. I don't think anything big was coming their way, but I, I, I don't know. Um, didn't get a chance to watch it, which is fine. I got to see Ubisoft, got to see Devolver, and then tomorrow I get to see Xbox. So. Um, yeah, if you're curious, again, I want to let people know if you're trying to watch this on Twitch and it's just not working, don't. It's not you. It is definitely us. It is totally us. If you're trying to watch this and it looks all weird, then, uh, yeah, it is. Do not attempt to adjust your, your sets. It's totally us. Mm-hmm. Um, RJ, what have you been playing? Well, a little bit of a more of a MLB The Show. Uh, yep. 21 this year, so I've been playing a little bit of more of that. I'm trying to get more... Um, Cards and players for my um, Diamond Dynasty team, and uh, Road to the Show, things like that. So okay. playing a little bit of little bits and pieces here and there. So you still got little mods and um, little uh, events and things you can do to pick up more uh, more stuff, basically for your things. So I've been doing a little bit of that, but for the most part, I've been playing, uh, still playing Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown. I'm still playing through that and uh, playing my online matches. I've got about I got about 150, 160 matches on my under my belt now, and I'm loving what I'm playing so far, but. Despite the fact that I'm playing the game for well over a decade, there's still things I'm learning here and there, um, playing in matches and things like that. I'm trying to learn the matchups between certain characters. So I've probably found uh, the characters that I really need to work on learning the matchup against. Uh, one is Leon, another is uh, Eileen, and another is uh, Kage, the ninja. So basically, I'm just going to have to figure out what throws to avoid, what uh, things I can punish, what things I can uh, set up, what things I can uh, really make my opponent um suffer for basically get get get, get wins really cuz cuz yeah cuz look there there every everybody every character in this game has a combo that can take off about at least 50 to 55% of a full health meter so mistakes are mistakes are uh dam- damaging in this game mm-hmm. so you can't afford to make any so a lot of times you'll get the, the new players on there who are playing right now and they don't understand that um punishment really means punishment in uh in this fighting game. Yeah. So a lot of times I've been playing online, which is basically a two match um a three best two out of three series, right? Uh the results of the first match are in and then it says you've won a rematch or not. And a lot of times what's been happening is uh you'll win a match convincingly and they'll just cut out. They don't want to play anymore. They're they're gone. Or you'll have a match that is really tough and this is what I've been through. I've been through a really, really tough match. Uh someone of a higher rank than me. But I almost, uh, almost win. The match goes like three to two. Their win, right? And I set up for a rematch, and they cut out. They don't want to. They want to protect their record or something. I've seen that happen before. So it gets a little annoying at times. Yeah. There are people like that in all. There, there's folks like that in all fighting games. You know, I just want to go the. I want to go the distance. If you you beat me O two, you beat me O two. It lets me know I got something to work on. And that's what I've. Uh, that's what I've been through this week. It's been a little up and down. The first week was pretty uh, smooth sailing. A whole bunch of new p- people who didn't know. Um, the gist of the game so far. Yeah. So you go through there and you get you get a lot of wins easy. But as time goes by, people start learning things. People watch some YouTube videos or see things from uh, virtualfighter.com, which is uh, still up and running, by the way. They'll go there and learn some things and uh, get the nuances of the game, go a little practice and uh, get more knowledge under their belt. Things get a little more difficult. So uh, the last session I had playing, I've had some, um, I've had some uh, 2 losses under my belt, just two straight losses, you know? part of the game deal with it and i gotta learn so i gotta start learning the matchups and everything seeing what i can do to uh improve my um ability against those characters really so i'll still be doing that um i should have been playing guilty gear strive because that came out yesterday for the ps4 and uh i was looking you know yeah i I was looking at music because when i do my music i look up new games released and i saw that and i was like is that one of those releases that is somehow somehow now popping up on this new release list even though it's been out for a while because i some folks were playing it early. The Guilty Gear it's, franchise yeah. is just, it's it, not just that, but a lot of the fighting game franchises, I have no idea if this is, especially when you're looking at new video games that release this week is a weird thing to look at because some will give you like just the AAA titles that release this week if there were any. Mm-hmm. Some will give you every single thing that released, even on down to the indie type stuff. And then some releases. I prefer you know, those. Yeah, some will give you not only everything, but even if it's for some reason got uh, a, a re-release, even yeah. though it may not be 
game of the year edition or super edition or even something else. It just yeah. might have gotten some yeah. sort the of point, a... The point is, it was released on this time, so here it is. Yeah, yeah. even though it may Do have that. already been a release that was already out, yeah. and it just finally made it to the PS4 or the PS5 or the Xbox system or something like that. Yeah, like, well, here's, a, here's, an ga- here's an older game on a new system, right. but it released, so here you go. Which is why, yeah, when I was looking up Guilty Gear, I was like, that seems... Like it's already been out, but it wasn't. No, get to get drive. They had the beta. They had the beta out there, and people were playing that and downloading. Well, then now like I that. know what to get some music for. But uh, yeah, Strive came out uh, for the PS4 on a uh, on the 11th on a on a Friday. So um, I would have been playing that, but I was more focused on on Virtua Fighter. I'm really it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle for me to play any um, fighting games really uh, for a minute because of Virtua Fighter. This is my first and foremost favorite fighting franchise of all time is Virtual Fighter. Okay. And it hasn't been around and it hasn't been around been relative, rel- relevant in like over 10 years. So I'm going to be making it for lost time. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be um Virtual Fighter for a lot this uh at least uh all of this month for me anyway. I'll probably get I'll get around to um I'll probably get around to um Guilty Gear in a little bit, but um yeah, it's going to be Virtual Fighter for a minute for me. It's perfectly fine. It's been Destiny 2 for a minute for me as well. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, with the with the what have we been playing discussion uh, wrapped up, we got 15 minutes. We'll see what we can go over on some of the news that we didn't hit uh, last week. And one that I kept in I kept in our show notes here, and I'm going to I'm going to mess up this guy's name even though I've known it for a while, but it's Benoit Sokal. Or, or SoCal, I'm not sure. He was the creator of Siberia, which was a it was a little it was a nice little puzzle game that I discovered. You know, I don't know how many years ago. It was a um, it was a long long time ago when I when I picked this up. It was in between playthroughs of like Mist and and you know the different series of Mist mm-hmm. or, or that whole that whole thing of put you in an environment and figure out puzzles. Yeah. And that's exactly what uh, Siberia was like, just an adventure game. And you, you, you know, there was no combat or anything like that. You just, you solved puzzles, you made choices, and, you know, you had yeah, conversations. Just one of those chill, uh, chill, sit back, relax, and play uh, type of games. Yeah. yeah, and they had three of them in the franchise. And um, he was a comic book artist uh, out of Belgium and a creator of that adventure game series, Siberia. Uh, he passed away on May 28th. Uh, from a unspecified long-term Ill- illness at the age of 66. Siberia, by the way, released in 2002. Siberia 2 in, 20, in 2004. Uh, Siberia, I want to say Siberia 3. Yeah, exactly. Um, he uh, returned for Siberia 3 in 2017. And then there was another game that I'm reading here, Siberia the World Before was announced in 2019, had been in development for 18 months by that point. Um, he worked on it with another studio in the months before his death. Uh, and, but there is no, there is no, there's, there's no update on that if they're going to continue with it or anything like that. So, um, Those were good games. I played the first one and I played the second one. I have not played the third one. I think I own it in some sort of Steam thing or whatever, but I think I do have the third one. I just haven't played it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was something I I meant to get to, uh, but um, never did. I always like to tell you when you've got some free games right now in the Epic Games Store for free, I think it's Control. Mm -hmm. So pick that up if you'd like to. If you're on uh, PC with the Epic Games Store, it's completely free. You don't have to have a subscription or anything else. You just have to be a member of the Epic Games Store, which is a free membership. So. Mm -hmm. Multiple times that's been on been free in all the platforms. It channels. has, yeah. yeah. And I want to say it's been free on Epic Game Store before as well, but I, I'm not sure. It was um, for a PlayStation Store, wasn't it? At one time, mm-hmm. it yeah. was, it was free. Yeah. It was either PS Plus or the Play. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was completely free. Um, I have to do that for. Uh, that reminds me, I have to do that for uh, Rocket League. I've got to have an Epic Games account to start the game. Yeah, on uh, on PlayStation. So. Yeah. Just haven't got around to it yet. But uh, so that is free, and there's PS Plus games that are free, and there's a couple of other games that are free. I think there's a game on Steam that's free. You probably there's another sale on PlayStation. I know that there is. Yeah, I've got that. I've got a thing in there about that. But Battlefield Four is currently free through Amazon Prime Gaming. All you need is Amazon Prime for that, and you may already have that. So Mm. that is free for you as well. 
Um, let's see. And that's talking about Square Enix's E3 show, Devolver Digital, which they just held theirs. Entertaining? It, always entertaining. Always Devolver. entertaining, yep. Yeah, always entertaining. Thought to see that later. Didn't seem like it was as over the top as it's been in the previous uh, installments, but that's fine. It de- from what I from what I gather, it didn't have to be because it's it was still the standout of every. Um... Uh, you know, yeah. I, well, they don't take themselves seriously, obviously, yeah. and and it's one of those things where you would never see something like this at one of the big. Pu- wow, look at that sky. Sorry, uh, there's golf on TV, and is really dark. Like they're just they're playing golf, but in the background really dark skies it's like the upper half looks like night and the lower I half know, looks like yeah. daytime yeah, that's yeah. how that's how dark the sky is it's out there. really oh, dark um better get it in before mm, uh the thunder starts yep uh but yeah the thing about devolvers is they don't take themselves too seriously they make fun of uh, they poke fun at a lot of the terminology and a lot of the marketing speak and all this other stuff even though it's still marketing yeah they're 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 making fun of it does it make me want their games more because of that obviously not no it makes me want to watch their thing more, yeah, but it, because but it makes of that. but it makes them memorable. Yeah, it does. It, and it's yeah. a nice break from from what you normally get. Um, the I draw, know, yeah, the only drawback would be uh, like we talked about earlier about with commercials. Commercials so good, you forget the product that they're selling. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jeff uh, Jeff Keeley did his Summer Games Fest, and I just saw Ubisoft do their thing, and I'll watch Xbox and Bethesda tomorrow. But I'm telling you, get rid of your hosts. I know you have to have them so that they can say words of. The people who pay for the whatever, but you, I think you could also do that by running a running a script or a script running a a bar at the bottom of the screen mm-hmm. that just says all these different things that you need them to say, or put up logos during something or I don't know, but it's worth for news. It's worth for news and sports sites. You know, it's for me. It's like so. I me and Wendy watched the um, the summer games fest thing in a skippable format where we could fast forward through the stuff we didn't want to see. And right. it was a lot of talk, talk, talk. Where's the video game stuff? Stop talking. Talk, 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 talk. A lot of talk. Where's my game stuff? Really? That's all we're here for. We're here for this. If you want to put, what's the percentage between talk and uh, actual footage that you want to see? That's was, a good... was it was it 70, 30, 60, 40? Uh, you know, I think they've done better at it. I think they've done better on minim- minimizing the, 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 the people part. Yeah. It's kind of like when you go watch a Transformers movie, you just want to see giant robots, and then they stick these human characters in there, and it's like, no, I don't need that. I want mm. more of the big robots. That's all I want. Yeah. And with video game stuff, that is all we want. That is our attention span. That is the way it works for us. Mm-hmm. Give us. You don't. I want gameplay, mm-hmm. but, even, but even I will forego that. I just, fine, give me entirely cinematic things that it represent no gameplay whatsoever. I'll take a trailer over but, you talking. Stop yeah, talking. Yeah, exactly. Of them talking, yeah. Exactly. Move it on. Get to the next thing. Yeah. Uh, I understand why they do it. I know I know exactly why it's done. I get that. And we have this conversation every single time E3 rolls back around. Mm-hmm. Um, but seriously, show us the games. Limit the talking to text on the screen so we can look at that. Or for more information, go here. Or to watch the gameplay deep dive, go here. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with that. If you want to talk, if you want to see our interview with the developers, go here so that you can find out more about this game. Stop including that because I would seriously watch the trailer and then they would bring out devs and I appreciate the devs who made the game. They put a lot of effort and they put a lot of time into it Mm -hmm. or they'd bring out somebody to talk to afterwards. It's like, I don't need to know any of this because all you're going to, you're going to give me, those guys are going to give me the marketing speech, not the dev speech, the marketing speech. I don't want either. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to see your game with your your talk over that. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tell me about it while you're showing me the game. Uh, or, you know, send me to a website where I can find out more about yeah. it if I want to. I'll put it in the credits at the end of the game. Or at the end of the presentation. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the, they used to do put that stuff in. Uh, I remember uh, dev speech was like putting the back of games and things like that. Oh. Remember that? No, no. Yeah, there some games. <laughs> some games. Some games were like that. I know special, some games, special things behind the scenes, things like that. I know uh, some stuff games that offered specials, um, extras, things like that. They offered developer commentary. Yeah, I know a lot of the Valve games did. Portal did it. 
maybe Half Life. I don't know about Team Fortress or something like that, but I know they had uh, they had a whole thing you could run through where developer commentary would play while you're playing the game. And I thought mm-hmm. that was a fantastic feature, mm-hmm. and not all games do that anymore. But I think it's wonderful, and they should incorporate that. Uh, it's wonderful to play through the game and have these uh, have these moments where you can find out, oh, this is how this section was built. Or how they came up with this design yeah. for this section. I think that's great. Do I ever go back and, and play those while that's going on? Not really. Mm-hmm. But I like the option of, I like having that option. I like having it there. Yeah. I might not have it, but I like the option of having it there. So, yeah. And this is, you know, and, and, and next week I'm going to rant again about E3 the way it's done. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, a good, there's a good article here that I haven't gotten into that uh, it says, uh, it says what to expect from me. No, no, no. E3, no, no, no. Does E3 hype ever actually pay off? And there's been constant, every year I think there is a article somebody publishes or somebody puts out there that talks about E3's worth. And we have had this conversation about E3's worth. I like the way that it's going now, and I hope it continues to go in that direction or gets refined to go in that direction, Mm -hmm. which is basically this whole streaming thing and you just, you know, you watch. I like this way better than I do last year. Last year was just everybody. I think everybody had a plan last year, and everything got thrown out, and so they had to reorganize. Which is why we got this this uh, date hopping of videos and showcases and reveals and things like that. It would whatever. Yeah, I didn't like that. Everything now seems to be all bundled into this one week thing, with a couple of things hitting outside of it. I know EA is like. Not next week, but the week after next or something like that. So it's it's moving around. But it is uh it's definitely better than it was last year, I would say. I, I, I'm 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 happy with it. Uh but then of course you still get the things where it's like that's too much talking. Back off. Back off. Nobody 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 wants to hear it. They really don't. Um so yeah. What else do we have here? Does E3 hype ever actually pay off? Oh, that's another thing. There is a bundle right now. Uh, itch.io. I-T-C-H dot I-O. And it is a bundle of games. And I'm talking a massive bundle of not just games. There's also books. Digital books, digital comics, probably some soundtracks in there as well. Uh, and it's all for $5. Um, $5 will get you more than 1,000 games, soundtracks, books, and more for just 5 bucks. But it ends today. It may actually already be over with. Let me... It may be over with already. Nope, it ended today at 3 a.m. Never mind, it is over. I meant to go back and buy it too. <laughs> I meant to throw it in there. But yeah, it's 1,272 items that you would have gotten for $5. They were ready, raising money for Palestinian aid. Uh, they did not get to a million. They got to 902,000 though, which mm-hmm. is fantastic. So yeah, never mind. That is, uh, that is now over with. So, oh well. Okay, coming up, we're going to talk about... I don't know, all of this stuff. So much E3 stuff. Oh, okay, well, before we do that, though, there was that whole thing where Facebook was offering 100% subscription money for a limited time to uh, their streamers. Anybody who would come over and be a streamer with them, they would get 100% of that subscription money, which I don't know how much that is. I've never subscribed to a a streamer on Facebook of all places. Mm -hmm. I've never subscribed to a streamer on Twitch. I don't think, or even on, on YouTube. I don't think I would, I I mean, I would, you would, I would follow, you know, I followed and subscribed. Yeah. 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 uh, Um, but, uh, I never think about it. Don't, yeah. This is why we never we I, we we ask you to subscribe only so that you'll know you know when we go live and that sort of thing. If you want to you want to watch every day, but um, what's what's this, what's what they always say like uh, subscribe and always like hit and subscribe, the, yeah. like and subscribe, always Smash hit the bell that, or something, you know, whatever or, it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is because I w- that's why you don't hear us pushing for like hey go ahead hey you're watching us go ahead and subscribe. I mention it, but uh, it's just okay. Thanks if you do. Right. <laughs> I appreciate it. 
not really anything that we we focus on. Just makes it easier for you to get our stuff whenever we post yeah. it. So that's the only. Thing. Okay, so Facebook offering one hundred percent subscription money for streamers. Huh. Yeah, ad money. Hey, no, no, that's what it is. Okay, it's like basically, money, basically yeah. well, basically like Twitch and and maybe YouTube or whatever. If subscribers get to you, you get a cut of that. But so do they. Mm-hmm. But for whatever Facebook was doing, it was completely one hundred percent. You get everything. But it was only a limited time, from what I understand, and. I don't even know how, how big their streamer base is on Facebook to know mm-hmm. how beneficial that would be. Yeah. Because you've got to build an audience. Mm-hmm. And so if you saw this and you're like, ooh, that's great, and popped over, you still need to build your audience. You might could bring your audience with you, some of them, not all of them would go. People just prefer whatever it is they prefer. So yeah. who knows? Uh, yeah. So when we come up, we're going to come back, we're going to talk about um, E3. And what we've seen so far, what we like, what we don't like. Um, I think the voice chat thing, maybe. Nope, never mind. I, I had three green bars. Now it's down to one red bar. So I don't know. Not doing that great. Here's a game that was announced at Summer Games Fest and was announced that you could go ahead and buy it now. It's a little indie game, and I think it's on the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4. It's also, I think, on PC as well. As far as consoles, it may only be Sony. It's called Chicory. C-H-I-C-O-R-Y. Chicory. It's something about painting and, you know, having a black and white game, but then you fill in the color and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's a little indie game. I think maybe one or two people created it. So, uh, But it's music from that game, and we'll be back with more of In Game Chat right after this. Welcome back to In Game Chat. Music here from Game Builder Garage, which is a Nintendo Switch title, I guess, unless you build games. <clears throat> kind of like Mario Maker, but now it's just games, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but that's, yeah, that's on the Switch. Game Builder Garage. So, Nintendo's E3 presentation, I think, is coming up on Tuesday at some point. I don't exactly know what time on Tuesday. But it is happening on uh, on Tuesday as well. We've got Microsoft tomorrow. But let's talk about what we saw this week from the Summer Game Fest and Ubisoft and maybe even Devolver as well, if we can get some time in there. I'm trying to find, if, uh, trying to find something that has a nice little summary of... Uh, Everything from, there we go, everything announced during Devolver's show, which is what we'll do. So, um, all right, let's start with Summer Game Fest. I don't know, did you watch any of this? Mm-hmm. Did you check out any of this? Mm-hmm. Okay. The uh, Wonderlands was announced. We talked about that. That was the Borderlands spinoff thing. Mm-hmm. It'll be out early next year for all the consoles and PC as well. Also, a new Metal Slug game announced, Metal Slug Tactics. It was kind of a top-down Metal yeah. Slug type thing. Yeah. Uh, Death Stranding is getting a director's cut. And there's a video for that. Look, it's Kojima, so it's weird, right? Mm. But it is totally a... 
I don't even want to say inspired by. It's more of it's just a, hey, we're putting Metal Gear Solid aspects into Death Stranding. I, I do not know why. Like I said, it's a very strange little trailer for the director's cut. Mm. But there's heavy, heavy Metal Gear Solid vibes coming out of that. Um, Jurassic World Evolution 2 was announced. I was I was okay with this. I liked this. Um, the trailer didn't really show you anything, but I, I liked the fact that they're doing they're doing it again. It's Frontier Developers, uh, Frontier Entertainment, Frontier Development, whatever it's called. Um, they're the folks who do. Uh, oh God, what is it called? <laughs> It's not. They did Roller Coaster Tycoon under a different. Well, no, they were under Frontier. They used to do Roller, to- roller Coaster Tycoon a long time ago, and then they did um, Planet Coaster. Is the one they did, where uh, because Roller Coaster Tycoon was kind of taken away from them, Atari kept the the IP, and so they couldn't go back to it, but they could develop their own thing. So they developed Planet Coaster. Um, then they did Jurassic World Evolution, which was basically. A zoo management game, but with dinosaurs. Hmm. I like the aspect. The execution didn't really work so well. There was some kind of problem. Uh, it, it just didn't kind of live up to it. It didn't get great reviews. The idea, the concept is good, but the execution, they they, they kind of stumbled with it, which, which I was worried about because I thought, man, I, I, the potential there is really, really good. Just uh, basically it's a zoo, but with dinosaurs. And so I'm glad that they're getting a sequel to 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 do that. Um, I'm glad that they're going to try again, basically, which is good when you've got a studio like Frontier who can do that. You know, bigger studios would either pass that off to another development studio to get a crack at it, or just kill it outright and say, "Yeah, this didn't work the first time. We're not going to put money into a sequel." Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, you know, I, I'm glad that they that they are Frontier doesn't have to worry about that. They're no, let's. I know the first one didn't do too well. Let's do a second one and, and improve upon it or, or make it better or whatever. Let's clean slate this thing. Because in all, for all intents and purposes, the, 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 the zoo management type thing, Jurassic World Evolution, has not been out for a very long time from what I understand. They could have just put more updates into it mm-hmm. to get it there. But because they're doing a sequel, which is why I'm thinking that, okay, good, they're wiping the slate clean. They're going to start fresh. And, and you know build the improvements that way. So I was glad to see that. Uh, Lost Ark looked interesting. Uh, It looked really, really pretty. It's a Korean MMO and it's going to come from uh, Amazon games, but Lost Ark looked interesting. Visually, it looked great. Gameplay wise, I don't know. I don't know if it was there or not. So, uh, there was a new trailer for Season 4 of Call of Duty, but no new Call of Duty announced, which was interesting. Among Us is getting new... You know, see, Salt and Sacrifice coming to PlayStation Indie Games. Solar Ash from Anna... Is it Annapurna, Annapurna Games or something like that? Annapurna? Yeah. Hmm. Um, that is coming up. Uh, coming out. And... Valorant as well is coming out. Also, they talked about Two Point Campus, Campus as well. And what else do they have? Escape from Tarkov, which is a game I haven't played. Mm-hmm. Um, the the first one, or at least it's an update for a new area coming from that. And then I don't know. What I think that, that was one. Uh, was that the one uh, Nate was talking about uh, earlier before? Wasn't he? He was having fun with that one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Nate was talking Man, about that. Man, that one. goes way back. Mm-hmm. That does go way back. God, I miss Nate. I haven't talked to him in a while. Mm-hmm. He's married, has a kid now. Yeah. 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 Uh, Blood Hunt, which is Vampire the Masquerade. It's like a multiplayer type thing. You're all vampires. I don't... Yeah. Oh, Dark Picture, uh, House of Ashes got a, got a trailer. Okay. Tales of Arise, a new trailer for that. Which the environments for that look great. The character designs look... Not as great as the environment. Mm-hmm. The environment looks massively detailed. Yeah. Characters, not so much. Planet of Lana looked interesting as well. An off-Earth odyssey. It rem- uh, they said the gameplay reminds them of a Limbo or Inside, which is exactly uh, that's a good description. But mm-hmm. it's all colorful. 
Oh, Limbo okay. was black and white. Inside was a very dark tone to it as yeah. far as the, the color palette and everything yeah, else. Very but dismal. Yeah, this yeah. was uh, this much more colorful, uh, colorful atmosphere. Overwatch 2 was shown off. That's great. Uh, Monster Hunter <laughs> Stories 2. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know. Back for Blood it gets a beta in August, and from what I understand, there was a, a leak or some sort of reveal where that's going to come to Xbox Game Pass. Mm. Um, Tribes of Tribes of Midgard comes out July 27th, if I can pronounce it right. It is a Viking co-op action RPG from Gearbox. Evil Dead the Game, they showed off some more for that. And the big one was Elden Ring. Hmm. That is the game that is with George R. R. Martin doing the writing for it, and the uh, the the developer is from software, mm-hmm. not Platinum Games, but from software. From software, yeah, yeah. What did they do? They did Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From uh, from software is Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Bloodborne, that, that, sort of thing, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. I don't know why I get from software and Platinum Games sort of like in the yeah, same Platinum, house. Yeah, Platinum Games is Vanquish, Bayonetta, uh, Under Domain. Yeah, those type of games. Yeah, I'm sorry, not Under Domain, Binary Domain, Binary, binary domain. domain. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I probably get those put into the same category or or, mm-hmm. or get those two confused because I know you play a lot of both. You like the stuff from Platinum. You love the stuff from From Software. Mm-hmm. It's a horrible name for a game when you're talking about stuff. From From, because mm-hmm. you have to put From From in front of everything. It's From From Software. Uh, but yeah, Elden Ring was shown off. I can't remember if gameplay was shown off, but it looks really good. Yeah. As somebody who is not drawn towards the... Def- for whatever reason, I'm still not drawn towards the Dark Souls game. Bloodborne, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Bloodborne, I like the setting of Bloodborne. That Victorian... Uh, yeah, but thing, also yeah. kind of like villages that are just in ruins. Yeah. Um, like, it is, this is the horrible things have happened here, and this is just kind of abandoned and that sort yeah. of thing, whatever it is. But yeah, and then only the monsters and the, and the whatever are it's still left. left. Yeah. Um, but yeah, something about Bloodborne, I really, really love that. The aesthetic to it, everything else, I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I put some time into it. Dark Souls, I still sort of can't get into that for some reason. I don't know mm-hmm. why. Um, but yeah, what I saw from Elden Ring, I really, really liked. Mm-hmm. I really liked. The visuals, though. Yeah, definitely the, vis- the, the visuals. Well, definitely the visuals. Because I can't remember if I was seeing gameplay or not. I think I was. I think they showed off some gameplay. Yeah. I mean, but also, it's from software. You can kind of look at their previous they stuff got a, they and got say, a good track record, yeah. Yeah. here's what you can record, kind yeah. of expect from this. Mm-hmm. It's what they've done before. It is likely what they will do again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just that you'll have your writing from somebody else, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, But also, putting uh, George in... in, in <laughs> you can understand the delay, I suppose. If you're a fan of Game of Thrones in the written form... You could you could likely understand how uh, people would say, "What he's doing something else?" No, he needs to finish this. And yet, at the same time, he hasn't finished that. So, where's the hope that he's going to finish this, or that it's not going to be? <sighs> we just don't want a final season of Game of Thrones ever again. <laughs> We don't want to build up to it and then have that happen at the a end ru- because a- we've worked all this way to get there. The rush job, you mean? I, you know, you can count it as a rush job or you can count it as a situation where George gave his input for what to do. In other words, he's like, here's how I'm going to go with these books. You can incorporate this into your series, right? Yeah. And it fell flat on its face. Regardless yeah. of rush or anything else, the story did not hold water in that final season. There was a lot of problems. There, were, there was a lot of problems with the production Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to say that the the battle scene being at night was a great idea, but it was just too dark on most screens um, to really enjoy it. And then the whole arc or whatever it was, everything that sort of comes to an end because of the last season did not work out, I think, the way that it should have. So is that what you can expect from him? You know, mm-hmm. In other words, is he changing that up for the end of the book? Even though we kind of already saw that because of the show, or what was he going to do? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. One of those things. Uh, and that was what we got from Summer Games Fest. I, I just I just recapped 
in like 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes, everything that took place in like a two hour show because there was a lot of talky talky and not enough gamey gamey. But that was me. So yeah. Um, and there was a lot of stuff where you could just skip that because you weren't interested in it if you wanted to. But it's all there. It's all on YouTube if you want to go watch that again. Uh, ooh, yeah. The This week's schedule for the uh, for E3, we've already sort of gotten into that. We talked about Ubisoft. They did theirs, Gearbox, and, and Devolver as well. Tomorrow, Xbox and Bethesda, it says 10 a.m. I think all times are Pacific, yes. 10 a.m. Pacific which is noon for us. Uh, Square Enix is at 12.15 Pacific, which is 2.15 for us. Warner Brothers is doing something at 2, which is 4 o'clock for us. The PC Gaming Show is at 2.30, which of course is 4.30 for us. And then the Future Game Show, I don't know what that is, if Future is a publisher or if it's just something called the Future Game Show, uh, that is on at 4, which is 6 o'clock for us. So you've got stuff starting at noon and then, boom, going all the way to 6 with some video game stuff. And then Monday at 9 a.m. is Verizon. I don't know what they're doing, but that would be at 10. It would be 11 o'clock for us, 11 a.m. on Monday. And television does something at 11.45 a.m. These are all times are now central. I'm I'm just doing it in my head. I'm not going to give you two times. Uh just give you our central time. Take two is doing something at 10 I'm sorry, not at 10 15, 12 15. Mm-hmm. Mythical Games uh, will have something at 1 10. Indie Showcase is at 2. Freedom Games is at 2 30. Capcom has something at 4 30 on Monday. Mm-hmm. Then Razor does something at 5. And then on Tuesday, we have Nintendo's thing at uh, 11 a.m. Nintendo will do a presentation. Bandai Namco does something at 4.45 in the afternoon. And then I think that's pretty much all until the E3 award show, whatever that is, first year they're doing that. And that's going to be at 6.45 our time on Tuesday to wrap everything up. Even though I know EA has something coming on up later on this month. And you'll probably have Sony doing something, which is later on as well. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but I don't see them kind of skipping the hype of everything going on. I I don't know that you'll get something this week, but probably sometime this summer you'll get some more stuff from Sony to announce as well. So that's what you can expect. We're going to go over the Ubisoft stuff, Ubisoft stuff coming up a little bit later and uh, hitting up some of these other little news hits that we've got as well. Uh, Coming up next, we've got music here from a game called Wave Break. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I saw the title. It's got very, it's got a lot of neon Wave break. Yeah, I'm not sure. This is called Star Runner is the name of the track. So I was thinking jet skis or something when I heard the yeah, name. Yeah, I know. I know what you're thinking. I know that. It's not, though. Hmm. Let me look this up. Let me just look this up real quick while I can. I say real quick with the internet, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you say that, but yeah. What are you, Wave Break? It's an arcade-style skateboarding boating game. Skate. So you probably... Boogie boards? Yeah, what, I, uh, Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but that's what it's called, Wave Break. This is called Star Runner. We'll be back with more of in-game chat right after this.
And welcome back to In-Game Chat. Music here from Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is your new game for the week, by the way. Uh, it's the main theme from that. Welcome back to the show. It is E3 week for us. Well, for everybody. Um, just new game announcements today, new game announcements tomorrow, or old game announcements tomorrow. I don't know. Things have been leaking rather furiously as of late. Intentionally? Uh, no, I don't think they are. I don't mm -hmm. think they are intentional leaks. I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. It's just that something gets uploaded to a website or things make it on the internet before they make it to the presentation because, you know, timing and everything. And there's, you know, somebody sees it and that's all it takes. One person mm -hmm. to see it and say, well, I saw this the other day. And, may, and then, of course, you got the rumor mill going. And, of course, then that eventually becomes, well, oh, okay, so that's what that was. You know, you realize that, yeah, it was a leak. Mm. Uh, I think there are leaks that are obviously intentional, but some of the ones that I've seen so far seem to just be oops. Mm. You know, actual oops. Okay. Ubisoft mm. did theirs just before the show. I think it started at 2 o'clock, actually. And it was another one where, again, just show us the games. You know, they had two hosts to, I guess, intro the games. You really don't need that. You don't. You just need a title card and say, here's the next game. Here's the next game. That's it. Mm -hmm. You really don't need it. Uh, they were showing off Rainbow Six Extraction. That was the first thing they showed off. Now, I was apparently under the... Uh, I, I was I was putting Rainbow Six Extraction and Rainbow Six Siege in the same thing. You know, in the mm -hmm. same family. Like... Here's Rainbow Six Siege, subtitle, Extraction. Mm -hmm. But apparently that's not the case. I mean, obviously it seems to be the same thing, but it's not. This seems to be a co-op campaign, a, a, a four-player co-op campaign type thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a full game or if it's just kind of a side thing from Siege or whatever it is. Uh, it will support cross-play and cross-save on all platforms on day one. It is a spinoff from Rainbow Six Siege. But it is, you know, Rainbow Six was all about some co-op fun. Um, maybe PvP as well, but I know mostly when we enjoyed playing it way back when on the Xbox 360. Mm -hmm. Rainbow Six Vegas, by the way, is what we okay. played. Uh, that was just us, uh, you know, as a co-op team going through the campaign. And it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So if we can do that again... Uh, that would be great. I hope it's going back to that because I was never a fan of the the the, the PvP aspect of what Siege did. Uh, I know there's a great community for it, and there's a lot of people who enjoy that, um, but it just never, it never, it never clicked with me. Mm -hmm. It was never a thing because it was just constant PvP. Yeah. And so then I would have to find players, and then are they any good to play with? You know, or or get a group together to play, and uh, just I don't know. I liked it better when it was when it was just co op campaign stuff mm -hmm. and not the PvP things. Uh, Rocksmith Plus was announced. It's a subscription service for you to learn how to play guitar or just have you know songs to play with if you already know how to play guitar. But yeah, um, Writers Republic. This is new. Although when I was watching it, it looked like it was oh gosh, one of those Ubisoft. Steep, I guess. No, oh, the uh, skiing game. Yeah, it it had it had aspects of steep to it, and then maybe kind of the crew, but also mixed in was trials as well. It's a okay. It's developed by the folks who made Steep. So okay. there, there we go. I just found that out. Riders Republic mixes together extreme sports into a giant online playground. It launches on September second. On all the consoles and PC. There is a trailer for it. It did look... kind of looked interesting. I don't know. It was giving me some SSX vibes. Mm. Even though it was all different kinds of aspects. There was, um, there was mountain biking. There was the wingsuit thing. Wingsuits, yeah. There was snowboarding. What else was there? Yeah, SSX was mostly... Um was going to be snowboarding uh, with um, dangerous elements that you had to use those tools to get through. Wingsuits for um, um, certain yeah. areas or hooks for ice. You're not going on snow. You're driving. You're driving. 
you're uh, boarding on ice now, so you need hooks to stay on the course, so you're going to fly off and lose uh, mm-hmm. time and everything like that. Well, so, yeah. d- you know, definitely check out the trailer if you're curious about it. Um, mm-hmm. Take a look at that. Rainbow Six Siege will be getting cross-play and cross-progression. Mm-hmm. Um, cross-play and cross-progression between PC, Stadia, and Luna, so the PC side of things, will be on June 30th. But in early 2022, you'll have cross-play on the consoles and then cross-progression on all platforms mm. uh, for Rainbow Six Siege. Mm. They talked about Ghost Recon Breakpoints because Ghost Recon is having a 20th anniversary. There really wasn't much to show you here other than, hey, we're still going to do this. Then they went on to talk about Just Dance, basically getting out some of the things out of the way before they get to their their bigger titles, I suppose. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, they showed more of, well, they didn't show more of that. They just talked about more of it and then said, hey, you're going to get more DLC this year. So we're not going to talk to you about a new Assassin's Creed game. We have nothing to show there. There won't mm-hmm. be a new Assassin's Creed game this year, but you yeah. will get more DLC for Valhalla. Yeah. Uh, seems to be what they were getting at. Stages are just something cosmetic or... They just said DLC. Oh, no, DLC. There's going to be a complete new campaign, The Siege of Paris. That'll be out sometime this summer. The Discovery Mode, the whole history tour thing that they did for the other, the previous two games, Mm -hmm. where you get a, like, I think it's dev dev commentary, but it's commentary, like you walk up to a monument or some kind of thing, and they kind of explain, here's what this is, here's when it was built, here, blah, 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 all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Just a history tour, basically. It's... uh, Really kind of interesting how they do that. And I'm glad they're doing that with Valhalla as well. Uh, Let's see. Far Cry 6. A season pass for Far Cry 6 will include DLC that lets you play as villains from previous Far Cry games. Um, Basically, Far Cry 3, 4, and 5. is You'll get the villains from that. Hmm. Never played Far Cry, so anything special about them or just... They're just uh, skins for characters or whatever. I'm not sure. It's a good question. Yeah. Uh, probably skins. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. It's been a long time since I played a Far Cry game, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. That was something that was leaked earlier this morning by Nintendo, no less, but shown off here for, uh, for Ubisoft's thing. It's just a sequel to Mario and Rabbids from God knows how many years ago. I think it was a Switch launch title, actually. Hmm. Yeah. And then their one final thing from Ubisoft was the Avatar game that they're working on, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. It's coming out in 2022 on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, PC, Stadia, and Luna. It is a first-person action-adventure game and is being developed by Massive Entertainment, those who did The Division games as well that is what we got from ubisoft which means we didn't get splinter cell and i'll go ahead and tell you how many days we have not gotten a splinter cell game because i do this every single week when i post the show in the notes for the show you will see at the very bottom how many days it's been since Ubisoft has released a Splinter Cell game, and I specifically tell you, a Splinter Cell release that is non-animated series or guest spot in another game franchise or VR exclusive, because they kept releasing those. And they also had a nice little title card for Netflix's Splinter Cell animated series that they're working on. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's not a game you can play. It has been 2,850 plus days since they released Splinter Cell Blacklist. And that was the last Splinter Cell release that we had. I don't count the guest. I don't count the guest spots. I don't count the mobile games. I don't count any of that stuff. VR titles? No, no, no. An actual game that people, the masses, get to play that is Splinter Cell based. A full-on game, not a tech demo, not a guest spot, not an animation thing, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just a full game. And they, it's another year. Yep. It's another year. So we'll do it again next year and see what we get. So it has to be uh, Sam Fisher as the protagonist, right? I mean. Maybe. Not even that. Really? I mean, I would like that, yes. Yeah. But 
even if they don't go that route, that's fine. What I what I think we will get, what I'm what I'm afraid that we will get mm-hmm. is a games of service type thing. Like Ghost mm-hmm. Recon Wildlands that they have or Breakpoint or whatever it's called now, where it's just a an ever evolving thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you're still on the same map or they throw in new maps, but it's all games as a service type thing. No, I want a single player campaign with possible multiplayer or or co op sections that you could do uh, outside of that single player game. But I want, I want a, you know, a full game, mm-hmm. a full $60, $70 game, whatever mm-hmm. that has, that's, that's Splinter Cell. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not Sam Fisher, even if it's somebody else, it's fine. Just keep the mechanics and that sort of thing. I didn't play these games for the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause I can't even remember to tell you the story about Blacklist. Uh, of course it's been 2,850 some odd days. Uh, but I can't even. T- I I can't tell you the story in most of these games. I just enjoy the stealth aspect of what they what they offer. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's all I want. And there's a lot of people who want that. It's become. Eh, I don't want to say a meme, but basically at this point, mm-hmm. it it's become a joke. It's one of those things. It's it's that whole thing that Kimmel does uh, or did for a long time, where he said, you know. You get to the end of the show and say, uh, you know, sorry, we couldn't, we didn't have enough time to have Matt Damon on. We'll reschedule him for another time or whatever. Yeah. And so this is what Ubisoft seems to do every single year. Ah, uh, sorry, ran out of time. We don't have Splinter Cell. We'll we'll do it next year. And then next year comes. Oh, sorry, ran out of time. Don't have Splinter Cell. Never. That's a lot of years. Two thousand eight hundred forty-seven days without a Splinter Cell game. Without even a mention of a Splinter Cell game. Without even a tease of, hey, maybe we're working on this. Nope. Nothing. So the number grows. I know. It's just, yeah, I'm going to be doing that for another year, man. At least. It's almost like, what are you, what are you going to do when they do announce one? You're going to take that little tag off your show post at the, at the, for every show? You're going to find something else that hasn't been released in a while and do that? Maybe I'll do a burnout game. Mm. <laughs> That's going to take that. See, I want something feasible, something that is that has a chance mm-hmm. of getting released. Splinter Cell at this point doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Yeah. Uh, like I said, that's going to be a joke. Burnout is just never going to happen. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, that's what we've got for, for our E3 so far. Uh, Devolver did their thing. Oh, yeah, Devolver did their thing. Let's talk about Devolver. Uh, Trek to Yomi is something that was coming out in 2022 that they announced. Wizard with a Gun was a, another one that they're going to do that is in 2022 as well. It's an online cooperative sandbox survival game. That's what that one was. Trek to Yo Trek to Yomi. Uh, does it say what it is? Does not say. Faced with tragedy. Nope. Doesn't give us kind of any sort of description as to what type of game that is. Look kind of platformy though. Inscription was announced from the creator of Pony Island and the Hex. Uh, is an inky black card-based odyssey that blends deck-building roguelikes, escape room-style puzzles, and psychological horror into a blood-laced smoothie is what they said. It'll be out on PC later this year. Devolver Tumble Time is a mobile game that Devolver calls the future of physics-based puzzle gameplay, elegant monetization, and strategic brand integration launching for mobile devices in 2021. I love when they don't take themselves seriously and they put stuff like that out. Demon Throttle is due out next year on the Nintendo Switch, and it'll only be released as a physical box copy. There will no there will be no digital release of this title. Hmm. Yeah. It is coming to the Nintendo Switch as a physical box set and only a physical box set through special reserve games. It tells the story. I just want to know how it plays. Death's Door comes out on July 20th on PC and Xbox. Again, I get a description of the story of the game, but it doesn't tell me. Is it a roguelike? Is it a first-person shoot? You know, it doesn't give me any kind of description as to what that is. Phantom Abyss, June 22nd on PC. Steam Early Access. 
It is a multiplayer game that casts players into procedurally generated temples and tasks them with retrieving relics. That actually looked kind of cool. It was like a single player Fall Guys, or is it Fall Guys, or is it multiplayer Fall Guys? And then, yeah, that one actually looked interesting. Phantom Abyss. And then they showed off Shadow Warrior 3. Due out this year sometime on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Which is a game they also showed last year at their E3 presentation, by the way. Shadow Warrior 3. That's what they kicked off with, Shadow Warrior 3, last year. And it seems like they kicked off uh, with it this year as well. So there we go. There was a lot of Microsoft stuff. I don't just I just don't know that we're going to have time to get into it. But they're going to start putting... They're going to start putting Xboxes in TVs. The company is working with TV manufacturers to embed the Xbox experience directly into internet-connected televisions with no extra hardware required except a controller. Kind of be like an app on a TV type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They said it is building its own streaming devices for cloud gaming to reach gamers on a TV or monitor without the need for a console at all. So, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like um, what PlayStation Now is. Mm-hmm. Where you stream the games, or what um, on live used to be? Yeah, remember on live? Mm-hmm. Man, that on live was a great concept. I just think it was too soon for it. Yeah, and also I don't necessarily know that it could survive in this ecosystem because if all the other, you know, if if, if a company like Xbox or PlayStation or Nintendo is going to start moving into that realm themselves. Mm-hmm. Then I don't think on live would have would have st- stood a chance at surviving that, because Xbox would just throw it into their Game Pass subscription. Mm-hmm. PlayStation should, but probably wouldn't throw it into its PlayStation Plus subscription, and yeah. then you could do that anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You could play your games anywhere through streaming. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know that they would survive, but yeah, Microsoft did not detail these devices. It sounds like a Chromecast style dongle could be on the cards for it as well. Microsoft said it's exploring new subscription offerings for Xbox Game Pass so more players around the world can experience the games. They didn't detail these plans, however. They're working with telecommunications providers on new purchasing models like Xbox All Access, which lets you buy a game a, a console and Game Pass for a monthly price whether, rather than putting it all up front. Cloud gaming on a browser will open to all Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members. Edge, Chrome, and Safari are the browsers set to be supported. They also said that they're in their final stages of updating its data centers around the world with Xbox Series X. This means gamers will see faster load times, improved frame rates, and experience optimized games better on Xbox Series X and S. Finally, later this year, Microsoft will add cloud gaming directly to the Xbox app on PC and integrate it into console to enable the likes of try before you download type things. So, yeah, this is all stuff you're probably going to hear about either in more detail or quick hits tomorrow during their E3 presentation. Um Let's see. On average, Game Pass on that point, Microsoft people can fly as Outriders, which we talked about that last week. Was also the number one selling digital game on Xbox during its launch week, and a top ten selling digital game for the month of April on Xbox. That was one aspect they talked about. They also mentioned that they were working on new Xbox consoles, some of which won't come to light for years. That's a direct quote. Some of which will not come to light for years. Mm. But they are working on more consoles. Which is exactly what they do. Release a console and then begin work on your next one. Or at least get the idea of what you're going to be doing. Now, this is just a headline, so I didn't read this, but it says, Xbox boss Phil Spencer issues thinly veiled dig at Sony's PC strategy. So let me read through this and find out. Here's the quote from Spencer in full. This is all quoting Phil Spencer, who is over at, my, er, over at Microsoft for Xbox. Across the Xbox ecosystem, we are now reaching hundreds of millions of people every month, and our total addressable market is going to grow, while others are relatively static. 
As the Xbox ecosystem grows in both content and total size, it becomes more valuable to both players and our partners. So right now, we're the only platform shipping games on console, PC, and cloud simultaneously. Others bring console games to PC years later. Here's the dig. (laughs) Not only making people buy their hardware up front, but then charging them a second time to play on PC. And of course, all of our games are in our subscription service day one, full cross-platform included. So yeah, he didn't name his Sony in the comments, but it was clear who he was talking about. Yep. Because Sony had just announced that I think the Days Gone mm-hmm. was coming to PC, mm-hmm. uh, and we mentioned that Uncharted Four would be on PC. Of course, this is years and years and years later. Yeah. Before it ever actually uh, got there, so people could be buying it twice, possibly. But then again, some people aren't. Then again, some people never bought a console. In other words, it, so here's the other thing. Why would you buy okay, Phil, why would you buy it? You bought it once on, on Sony and played through it. Why would you buy it again on PC? Mm-hmm. Uh, with the exception of maybe you sold that off. And if you sold that off, then you made money off, off the purchase that you made in order to buy that a second time on the PC if you wanted to do that. You already played it. You know, I'd, I'd be interested to see the numbers of how many people who bought and played those games on PlayStation are buying and playing those games on PC. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see some sort of statistic for that to see how large that actually is. You know, break it down between here's people who still own a P uh, still on the PS still on the PS4. Yeah, still and, on the console and, was buy it on and, PC. and still yeah. on the game and then bought it. And then show me people who bought the game on the console but then got rid of their console, got rid of their game, yep. and then bought it on PC. Bought on show PC. me the P- people who never bought the game on console, but still own a console, Mm -hmm. and then bought it on PC. And then show me the people who don't have any of that. They just have a PC, and their first time playing that game was was the purchase on PC. I'd be really curious to see those numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's an attach rate or whatever it is. I'm just curious as to how that is all divided. Yeah, I mean, it would be uh, something along the lines of... uh... For if you bought it on the console already and buy it on PC, why would you double dip unless you collectability about one thing or it looks better on PC, it plays better on PC or something like that. Other than that, I can't think of any other reason to do that. Yeah, I've been tempted to to buy Horizon Zero Dawn only for the fact that I could start fresh. Mm-hmm. You know, I've I've mentioned before Horizon Zero Dawn I have on PlayStation and probably looks great on PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. Probably loads fast on PlayStation Five. Yeah, it would probably look great on my PC, except you know. My graphics card is God knows how many years old now, mm. and I can't get a new one because they're hard to go, come by. Um, I've thought about doing a fresh start because I've told you that my save on Sony, on PlayStation, on the console, mm-hmm. is at a point where I was in a boss fight and my resources are horrible. So it's like I need to find a save that's before that. If I mm-hmm. still have one, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not the kind of guy who makes multiple saves. I'm the kind of guy who has one save, that's the one I save to as I progress, especially in my single player type stuff. Now, if it's a game that gives me multiple branches of opportunity, that's mm. different. Yeah. That is obviously that is, that is way different. But on some sort of single player type of thing, I don't really do multiple saves. I just overwrite what I've done. Yeah. Um I'm trying to think of any games that I've done recently that uh, that lets you do that. And there, you Dark, know what? So- Dark Souls don't. Yeah. Uh, th- I also haven't put that game in the system, so I have no idea if it has like a list of here's previous auto saves for you to load back up. I don't okay. know. I know they some games do that. Yeah. Some games have one auto save and it just overwrites that. Yeah. Some games have just a massive list of like here's where you auto save this, this, and this. And this. Yeah. Cyberpunk comes to mind because that's the one that it got annoying after a minute. Um, I think it holds like ten auto saves at one given time. Yeah. Throughout your playthrough. That got really annoying after a minute. You know, just keep it in one spot and be done mm-hmm. with it like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so your only, your only option, if you can't find that other save on Horizon Zero Dawn, would be to just uh, start over. Sk- skill up. <laughs> keep doing it until you get it right. Yeah. Or maybe that's the Dark Souls of me <laughs> doing that because tough boss battles are just, you just keep slogging through until you get it right. Do it till you get it right. The problem is now. Well, I say the problem is now. It's not really a problem. It's mm-hmm. just that I haven't played that game in so long that I don't know the controls, <laughs> and it's throwing me into a boss fight. So then I would have to learn the controls under yeah. massive pressure. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. It's probably at a point where you know what, just start over or find a save that was earlier. Then again, I could download it on PC and just start from scratch and, and mm-hmm. go there if I wanted to do that. But 
I'm curious again. I'm curious is to the to the breakdown. Of, yeah, that's of yeah. How that, that would be a plays how out. You break it down in uh in that case. Sony has those numbers, I imagine. I would guess they would. They yeah. probably have some sort of number to kind of to see about that. Maybe that's why they're not going all in. Maybe that is why they actually are starting to ramp up more PC title releases, mm-hmm. even though they're older. Maybe they're sort of ramping up. I, I think it'll take a while for them to kind of release on PC and PlayStation just because they know that that's no release it on PlayStation as an exclusive, get those console numbers in, then release it on PC because again, they can look at those numbers and see, look what our PC titles are doing. They're selling, they're making us money and that's good, but they're only making us money from people who aren't buying them on the consoles already. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, so go ahead and get, let's go ahead and get our market for the co- people who own consoles and the people who want to buy a console to play these games, and then we'll appease the PC people later. They don't seem like they're going to switch. They're not going to go out and pick up a console. Nope. Uh, so we'll just get to them when we can get to them. Mm-hmm. What are we losing by not, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, sales, I suppose, actually. You know, you could release both. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you might, deter sale, you might deter sales of your console, depending on what it is. Yeah. You release something like... There's certain priorities you got to go through yeah, yeah, this yeah. type of thing. So you yeah. release a new God of War or a new Uncharted or a new Last of Us. New or a AAA new, title. It, it's going to yeah, be exclusive exactly, on our console first. Exactly. Yeah. But what kind of money could you get if you just released both of them on console and PC at the same time? I don't mm. know. I don't know. And th- that's something that they would have to take a risk at doing. Yeah, it would be a risk. They would have to decide to do that at some point to see how those numbers fluctuate and change. As to who buys what, because that would cut your console costs. That would mean right. cut, that would cut your console um, profit on that one. Exactly. Get as much as you can for but your you console still, first and, and foremost. But let then me go to PC. Yeah, yeah. Let me add again. You still can't go into a store right now and buy a PlayStation Five or an Xbox Series X. Mm-hmm. You can go into a store and buy a PlayStation Four or an Xbox One or whatever, but you can't buy the new consoles. You can't just walk into a store and get them. Mm-hmm. They're still hard to get. Yeah. Just like the graphics card that I was talking about. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. So again, they couldn't they couldn't do that and see a difference. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't no, do I mean, any kind of right now they can't they can't do that experiment because yeah. the console's not available to buy. Yeah. Like if they released Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which is a PlayStation 5 exclusive, it's only mm-hmm. on PS5. Yeah. If they release that on PS5 and PC, they're not going to know the console numbers cuz the consoles aren't readily available. Yeah, they're just going to sit and wait. Seemingly. Yeah. So all right, folks, we have come to the end of the line for this weekend. I want to thank you guys for, you know, those of you watching on Twitch uh, and wherever. I, Slug, thanks for thanks for slogging through the Internet. Issues I know. That we got here. Yes, thanks for going we, through we, that. We appreciate that. Right? Uh, Academy Impossible, AC Wraith, A-10, Commander Root, Stephen Van Dam, Tactics 59, The Windigo. See you soon. TYTDL and unionizes. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us during the during this. Uh, hopefully, maybe next week, maybe the week after, it'll all get fixed. We'll see. I hope. Uh, I'll give you a tweet update if it happens during the week and be like, "Hey, everything's gonna be great for this weekend." I'll let you know. Anyway, this is music from a game called Mighty Goose. <laughs> Sleep with a goose simulator? It's not. Okay. I don't think. Let me look. That goose doesn't need to be even more powerful than it is already. It is a fast-paced run-and-gun shooter starring a bounty hunter named Goose. Is it an anthro goose? It's a goose. It's an actual actual goose. Okay. Yeah, it's an actual goose. So, yeah. Um, A bounty hunting goose. Yeah. That's interesting. He doesn't have personality or style. He just looks like a goose who's... Going out killing things. So, yeah, it's a goose. So, that's what that is. You guys have a fantastic week. We will see you next Saturday. Subscribe to us on all the platforms that we mention. Have a good one. Have a great E3 because that's what we're going to talk about next week. Mm-hmm.